Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Superstars of Wrestling Review Series for the 30th of Sept or, um, 30th of July, 1988. Um, and we've only got about 10 or 12 episodes left that I can find of Superstars. Obviously, as more are added to WWE Network or elsewhere, I will do my best to bring them to you. Um, something I did not know, the Iron Sheik is here, uh, in an enhancement challenge match. Well, a little bit above enhancement. Scott Casey, his adversary. I did not know he was here in 88. Must have been very short. Punches, kicks, and the like from the Sheik. Uh, this is about a month away, a little less, from SummerSlam. Got rent suplex by the Sheik. Gets him where he wants to be. And eventually he will hit a uh, camel clutch. Gets, gets the victory and really... Uh, does all that in under four minutes or so. Not really a big deal. Obviously, the Sheik being here is more, I guess, of a vanity project. To think that he's gone from world champion at the beginning of 84 to, I guess, enhancement talent, talent thank you in 88. This is really interesting. Um, to me, also, his body... Not in good shape. The hype for SummerSlam and the challenges of Ted DiBiase, among others, uh, are a big thing here. Randy Savage cuts a promo with Elizabeth, basically saying he's found a partner for SummerSlam. The uh, continuation of the move towards Jesse Ventura as referee is there. Craig DeGeorge, the one doing the interview, they talk, they talk Hogan and Savage, about the power of the Mega Powers, Mega Powers and Mega Bucks is set in motion as a concept about a month before SummerSlam or so. The first SummerSlam, of course, 1988. Actually, 88, probably my favorite SummerSlam of all time. 92, probably second. Um, obviously, 88 happened before I became a fan, but I, I love that uh, Mega Powers, Mega Bucks concept. Um... The, the Warrior win, even though I wasn't a Warrior fan, was cool. I just, I remember 87 and 88 for me as a kid, knowing that it had happened before I became a fan, but not too far before, was somehow fascinating to me. And to this day, 87, 88, 89 are my three favorite years in WWF and in wrestling period, actually. Uh, Greg the Hammer Valentine in an enhancement match. Jimmy Hart is his... Um, manager at the time. Hart and Valentine really don't have a great deal of direction. Valentine goes into 89 with a feud with um, Ronnie Garvin, but here uh, his main feud, Don the Rock Morocco, back suplex and uh, double butterfly suplex by Valentine. Valentine, of course, a guy who doesn't do his best work in enhancement matches. Actually, I would say does his best work in Matches where he is uh, able to to go for at least 15 minutes. Uh, Rilla Monsoon always used to say that, and I, I do too. And it's funny, the independent guys that, that worked with Greg over the years when I was in the indies uh, in the early 2000s would say the same things. that He would hit about 12 to 15 minutes working a match on an indie show, and he would hit another gear. Which is really interesting. Um... Event Center promos, they're hyping Beefcake and the Honky Tonk Man at all the upcoming circuits. Uh, Georgia, otherwise known as George Steele in drag, yes, this is a thing, is there. Uh, and the Hard Foundation and the Rougeos are a thing for this time in WWF history as well. Um, we have Brutus the Barber Beefcake here. Uh, Beefcake is about a month away, maybe a little less, from being attacked by outlaw Ron Bass, put in a place where he cannot challenge for the uh, Intercontinental title at SummerSlam. His enhancement match is really, really simplistic. Headlocks, punches, kicks, and the sleeper hold, and then he does, obviously, the little haircut thing. Actually, it's funny, um, some enhancement talents have told me over the years that they, in fact, have gotten... Uh, uh, extra money, two or three hundred extra dollars, actually, from being willing to uh, get their hair cut. 
uh, on top of the money that they would normally get. Anyway, uh, Bad News Brown, who's been brought in pretty recently here. Uh, I think he does come in in the summer of 88, maybe late spring. So maybe been around a couple of months here. But Punch Kick, uh, Bad News Island Cottage uh, is was a big deal in real life judo also big deal in japan uh and calgary as far as wrestling is concerned uh does so many punches strikes and all of that he actually from what i have heard over the years had bad knees and didn't leave his feet very often in this time period for that reason however does do the ghetto bladder blaster finish uh, then we are moving towards an event center promo, Hogan and uh, Andre the Giant's opponents, otherwise known as the Mega Bucks, with Bobby Heenan are here. We're talking about Jesse Ventura being the referee. And Andre says he got rid of Hogan in the Survivor Series. He got rid of Hogan at WrestleMania 3, which he did not, but revisionist history, heels are allowed to do that. Uh, he got rid of Hogan just about everywhere. They're hyping SummerSlam, which is August 29th. So literally just under a month here on this program. Sam Houston, the brother of Jake the Snake Roberts and son of Grizzly Smith, is eating a WWF Superstars ice cream bar as we go back to the ring with the Rockers. Rockers are new around this time period. Uh, double hip tosses, double drop kicks, double super kicks, and the like. Marty Jannetty, Shawn Michaels just showing their value here haven't really got a feud yet uh they move into something with the brain busters within a couple of months here double fist drops get them a victory and away they go go to a summer slam report summer slam 88 pay-per-view pay-per-view still not a big thing gotta remember pay-per-view only been around consistently for wrestling for about three years a little more than three years uh jake roberts and Hercules is here. Junkyard Dog and Rick Rude will be here. Of course, Hogan and Savage against the Mega Bucks is here. Rude obviously talks about wanting to get rid of the Junkyard Dog, taking the dog out for a walk, and, you know, be him being anything but rude. Speaking of anything but rude, the Big Boss Man is here, and he, well, has not moved forward, uh, you know, pretty, pretty regularly. Uh, at this point, he looks so young in 88. He, you know, just the difference uh, of him being managed by Slick in, in late 87, early 88. Punch, kick, and sidewalk slam gets him a victory. And the boss man, uh, who doesn't really have a feud as of this point in time, does move into one pretty quickly uh, with Hulk Hogan late 88, early 89. So within about four months, he's moved in with Hogan. But... Uh, that, that time isn't there. The Powers of Pain with Baron Von Raschke of AWA fame in a squash match here. Warlord and Barbarian. They are brought in as baby faces. I don't quite understand that. The Enhancement Talent tries to slam them. That doesn't work well. Him being the warlo Warlord, pronouns pal. And a top rope headbutt from the Barbarian finishes that match off. But anyway, um, we... Hype SummerSlam, Mega Powers, Mega Bucks. Savage says he's ready for the challenge of Andre and DiBiase with his partner Hulk Hogan. Liz is beside him, and they are hyping that one pretty big. Also, there is a local house show card. I'll run down it as they run down it here uh, for the Boston area. I believe Boston area. Yeah, Hard Foundation, Fabulous Rujo Brothers on Saturday, August 6th. Uh, of course, that's a pretty big deal. Ron Bass and Coco Ware, Demolition and the British Bulldogs for the Tag Team Championships. And the Honky Tonk Man and Brutus Beefcake, as mentioned. Peggy Sue there for the Honky Tonk Man and Georgia there for, um, for uh, Beefcake. Savage and Ted DiBiase for the championship. And Duggan and Andre in a Lumberjack match all on the 6th of August 19 and 88, so about a week away. Uh, wish I'd been a fan for that time, but anyway, hopefully you're a fan of these Superstar series and the old school reviews we're doing. But anyway, we will be back with more right after this.